Hello everyone, Finn Ravens here. Today I have something that just, when I found this, it blew my mind and I had to get it. So, I have in front of you, God of War 2 press kit for the PlayStation 2. So this was a promotional um, marketing kit, basically that allowed different vendors that was either a vendor of Sony or hired through Sony to promote the game. So on the left hand corner we have both of the original black label titles for the PlayStation 2. So these were the original releases and then after a lengthy year the game sold more than 600,000 copies apiece and was eligible for greatest hits which then prompted the greatest hits release for the game. So we're not here for the games, we're here for this beautiful press kit box set. I'm going to go ahead and move the games out of the way and we will get started showcasing this. I pretty much wanted to showcase the games to show you scale. This box is very big and it is in pristine condition. I don't think I've ever seen a press kit in this wonderful shape. It is just even the edging it seems like this was made, pulled off the production line, probably given to a vendor, and they put it away in storage for the last 15 years or so. So if you are a God of War fan, you will definitely enjoy this one. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get this opened up. So this flap just opens up and it folds open to the left. And then we are met with some beautiful art. And then this right tab also opens. Now we have the 2005 Game of the Year franchise continues. God of War 2, the end begins March 2007. Kratos was killed and damned to hell. That only made him angrier. Adjust my lighting, sorry for the glare. There we go. So as you can see, the rating says RP rating pending, so this was definitely a promotional marketing kit. So that's the first pamphlet I wanted to showcase. Then we have to our valid, valued retail partners from the production manager now we have the inner contents of this box. I will show you we have a God of War keychain. I guess it is open. It's easier to showcase. I wasn't sure if it was open or not. The end begins. Then we have 
a promotional reel. At the end of the video, I'm going to splice basically um, this video's contents. So by the time I do my outro, you'll be able to view what's on this in video form. So I will go ahead and go over this. I'm not sure what's on it currently. I'm sure it's just a promotional, probably a lot of the cutscenes in the game or something that was an advertisement. So then we have a giant insert. This, I believe, comes out, like, maybe maybe not, oh, it does, it just pops right on out, so, it's just the insert for it, and, I mean, they did an amazing job with the art style on this, like, they did not skip any areas of it, I mean, even the sides, which would be mostly covered with that insert, are, has the art for it, it's just a beautiful set. To behold so um if there's any god of war fans out there please let me know i loved the franchise i played the crap out of it when i was a kid so um if you guys have any questions feel free to leave a comment i'll answer any questions that you guys might have um, i'm looking forward to do more promotional videos as soon as i can it's just getting these items are extremely hard um in today's age it, you know, this game came out almost 15 years ago, or, or if not longer. So these things are super hard to find, and especially in any kind of decent condition. So um, thanks again for watching. And uh, as always, I will see you guys. Take care. The end begins, but it ends. Hi, I'm Corey Barlog, the director of God of War 2, and what I'm going to do today is kind of walk through some of the E3 demo for God of War and kind of give you a little bit of insight into what we're bringing new to the franchise. So sit back, take a look at God of War 2. So what we're going to do is kind of go into a little bit of the finer details of what God of War 2 is all about. Right here is just a little bit of a cinematic kind of bridging you into a level that actually takes place much further in the game. Um, this is an area of the game that is about one-third of the way in. So some of the enemies that you're going to be encountering throughout the game are returning from God of War 1, like the undead soldiers here, but a good portion of enemies are all new enemies that we're integrating into the game that have entirely new functionality, which we will discuss a little bit later. One of the things we can talk about is how we are kind of pushing the idea that around every corner there's something new. You know, each time you're moving through the level, you're going to experience and see something new. Some of the new characters we're introducing are these, these minions of the fates. Kratos is on the island of the fates, seeking out the three sisters of fate in order to actually change his destiny. So the sisters are actually protected by a series of minions, one of them being this guy, who is actually able to control a cyclops. They're able to use a horn to summon them, so if you don't kill them quick enough, they're actually going to spawn Cyclops against you, as well as jump on their backs and use them as a weapon. So these guys are fairly vicious when coupled together with Cyclops. One of the things we're really trying to push within this game is that true sense of immersion, that feeling of really living in a, 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 a fully realized, breathing Greek mythological world. So here's an return of the minion, he actually blows his horn, summons the Cyclops, and then he's going to be able to jump on his back. So what the interesting thing about this is, you're able to dismount him from the Cyclops in real time through one of the mini-games, and if he's dismounted, if you don't take care of him, he'll actually be able to run back over to the Cyclops and jump back on him. So lots of combo potentials with this, and the same sort of context-sensitive button mini-games that we had from the last game are returning, but even more brutal. Actually able to rip out the Cyclops' eye and then collect it, which actually will open up a bonus later in the game. Another thing that we're pushing in God of War is that puzzles don't just exist within one space, within one room. We're really opening it up to 
seeing a, a, a part of a puzzle in one area and having to traverse the entire level in order to find another piece and then come back to that area and solve the puzzle. So it really takes away that compartmentalized feeling that sometimes games can fall into, which I think is pretty exciting for this. So that temple right there is actually going to be an area we're going to come back to later. It's going to be a way we're going to be able to get to the Golden Fleece, which is something I will explain a little bit later. Another cool thing uh, that we were talking about on the first game but never really got to do was the idea of using Kratos' blades to navigate, to grapple. And when we first talked about it, I really wanted it to be just open-ended. Open world, we could just go wherever the hell we wanted. Uh, but unfortunately, it didn't really work out like that. It didn't work out as, as open-ended because it just really didn't focus the levels. It became too much about the swinging and too little about the actual gameplay and the, and the fun. So we made it a lot more streamlined with, a, I think, a lot cleaner system where there were predetermined points within the world that really allow you to have a specific experience with the grapple. Makes it a lot more fun and a lot more fluid. We keep it very simple. Single button to grapple so that you're not trying to do 47 buttons in combination. Another cool thing about the world is that there are several points throughout the entire world where you're really going to have to pay attention to the things around you because you can also interact with different parts. You can actually destroy uh, columns, grab them with these interactions and actually shake them and rip them down like you're going to see here. Just adding to that sense of really existing within the space, this, this real world that you're living in that you can actually manipulate. We've brought the Cerberus back, but we have a new Cerberus that has new minigame interactions. So it really gives you a sense of progression while you're fighting him. You're able to actually rip off each of the heads. So one at a time throughout the fight, you're going to be able to go in and grab his head and through a minigame actually rip the head off. So when you're fighting him now, he's only got two heads and so on and so forth. You're actually going to be able to rip off all three heads throughout that. This is a, a little test puzzle we had done for E3 just to show off the idea that Kratos is able to interact with more than just blocks and levers throughout the world. You'll be able to interact with bodies that are either dead when you get there or maybe characters that you fight, you can kill them and then use their bodies to solve different puzzles. It's just another way to really kind of make the player have to think about the environment that they're in, make the puzzles a little bit more interesting. This brings back the idea of the combat puzzle, you know, having to actually solve a, an environmental puzzle or some sort of action while dealing with a, a spawn of enemies that are surrounding you and constantly jumping to try and thwart your efforts. Another cool thing we're doing is bringing in enemies the, of varying size, uh, enemies that feel like they're a boss, but really they're, they're creatures that you're going to see multiple times throughout the game. One of them is this, this rock minotaur that we had for the demo, and, and right now you're kind of just interacting with him in a stationary position, but he gets even more intense, uh, is able to navigate around and really become a formidable foe later in the game. And as you're seeing, another cool thing we did with the magic was something we wanted to do in the last game, the idea of allowing you to move around, keep mobile while using a magic. It was really annoying to use the Medusa head and have to stand still each time you used it. But uh, with this, we really allowed the player to keep that kinetic motion of the, the combat going while able to maneuver. And as with all the other creatures, you have contact-sensitive minigames with the sort of Kratos flair to them. Another thing we're pushing within the game is that the story is not just being told through cinematics, but through interactions with characters inside the world. So in E3 we have uh, a little bit of an interaction with a character that is uh, telling you how to get into Medusa's temple and giving you a little bit of a hint throughout that, but this is just for E3 and the final game he's actually going to be an entirely different character that you interact with in an entirely different way. Um, and there's a little bit more of a puzzle element up here. so. Rest assured that if you played this or if you're watching this, you're actually going to experience a lot of different, uh, a much more different experience in the final game.
This is another neat idea of bringing the Medusa beams into more of an environmental hazard. So not only can they be hazardous to you, but you can use them as hazards against the enemies, knocking them into the beams and then shattering their frozen statues. So it adds a, a, a nice uh, tense element to the gameplay. And what's coming up next, we're actually going to return to the temple area that we discussed earlier with another puzzle piece to actually be able to solve this puzzle now. So the temple is kind of wavering on the edge of this cliff. And if you put both of the blocks on the end of the temple, like so, you're actually going to be able to have it tilt up enough to expose the underside of the temple. This will allow Kratos to go over, grab it, and through a context-sensitive minigame, shove the temple over and create a passageway to get over to the Golden Fleece. The Golden Fleece is a, a, another object that we're bringing into the game that adds to Kratos' combat abilities. This adds a little bit more to the defensive abilities, allowing Kratos not only to parry melee attacks, but also to parry projectile attacks and beams within the game. So it's particularly effective against the Medusas, who were able to just turn you to stone in the last game, and now you're able to deflect their beams back at them and turn them to stone. In the final game, of course, we're actually going to have a much more complicated interaction. Complicated is probably not even the right word. I would say we're going to have a, a much more challenging interaction, similar to the beam on this door. So you'll actually have to rapidly press the button, reflect the beam back, it turns the door to stone, and now you can actually shatter the door. This is a door you saw earlier in the level, so it's, again, bringing back that idea that all the levels sort of fold in on each other and really sell the puzzle uh, by in encouraging the player to explore the entire level before they're able to actually solve it. What we're going to see here is Medusa's sister. She's actually here trying to change her fate because you killed her sister in the last game. So she's really, really upset. This is one of our boss fights that you'll fight later in the game. So that is our little taste of God of War 2. Hope you enjoyed it and uh, look for it in spring of 2007.